Good evening, I'm Alan Sinclair. After months of heated debate and argument, the first asylum seekers have arrived to be housed on a controversial barge in Dorset. Around 50 men were initially expected to board the Bibby Stockholm, which is docked in Portland Port. The government says it will help cut the cost of housing them in hotels. But BBC South can confirm in another twist to this story that not everyone has turned up as expected. Our reporter Michelle Cross is live in Bournemouth for us this evening. Michelle, tell us what happened there today. Well, Alan, the first group of asylum seekers are set to spend their first night on board the Bibby Stockholm on Portland tonight. Now, the Home Office confirmed previously that up to 50 18 to 65 year olds are expected to form today's staggered arrival, coming by coaches from different counties. Now, nine of those due to board today were supposed to come from a hotel in Bournemouth, which has been housing asylum seekers. But in yet another twist, as you say, eight of them remain here this evening after refusing to leave over safety concerns. Elizabeth is a friend of one of them. I think everybody's quite worried. I think they were very brave, these men today, to say no. I think it was a huge step to take. It just shows just how scared they were. Because, yes, I think it crossed their mind. What happens? What will happen if I say no? What will happen to me? No one knows exactly, actually. Now, we saw the coach leave Bournemouth just before one this lunchtime, and it appeared to be carrying just one passenger. Now, one of the group who stayed behind didn't want to be identified, but told me he'd fled Syria, leaving his wife and two children, and has been waiting on his application to be processed for eight months now. It's a huge difference to go from here, which is OK, to, to the barge. I mean, the barge in itself is, is quite a, a restricted type of accommodation for the 200 people it was designed for. But now the UK government has decided to house twice, no, more than twice as many as that, up to 500 people. So people, people are already distressed and coming here, you know, with mental health issues, with, with trauma. It's going to be so much harder for them. Now, Alan, the exact consequences of today's stand aren't quite yet clear, but we've seen opposition locally for months now on plans to put 500 single male asylum seekers on a barge to cut the cost of housing them in hotels, which the government says is costing £6 million a day. What authorities probably didn't anticipate was opposition from the asylum seekers themselves. Back to you. Michelle Cross, thank you. Well, earlier on, I spoke with the chief executive of the charity, which has been campaigning on behalf of some of those asylum seekers, and I asked him why they've stepped in. There's some concern over the degree of pre-screening that's happened. Um, we understand that there really hasn't been any pre-screening at all. And why is that important? Well, we're dealing here with people who have faced amongst the most dangerous and difficult traumas in their life. Uh, they've, been, they've been victims of war and conflict, torture, detention, persecution. And some of them have, have been already traumatised by sea crossings across the Mediterranean, potentially across the Channel as well. And housing them on a barge on water potentially re-traumatises them again. And so we, what we want to see is a degree of proper screening done before those individuals are put on board the barge. Is it the asylum seekers themselves who are making a stand or have they been pushed into doing this by organisations like yours? The asylum seekers are really very confused. They don't really know quite what's going on. Um, up until a few days ago, there was some uncertainty about what the Bibby barge was. Um, they don't know whether this is because their asylum claims are somehow being rejected, if this is some sort of punishment. So we have a legal access team in any case, and that legal access team has put individual clients in touch with lawyers. Lawyers are assessing their cases, and they're challenging those cases, uh, the, the, uh, the removal to the barge in, in instances where it's inappropriate. So how quickly will this come to a conclusion? When will we know if those people do move onto the barge? Well, you can imagine that the government will try and push this through as, as quickly as they can. From our point of view, the and I'm not a lawyer, so I can't tell you how quickly it's going to happen. But what I can tell you is that as a charity, we fundamentally uh, oppose the use of a barge like this for virtually warehousing asylum seekers. We believe they should be dealt with with dignity, where possible, uh, integrated into communities. Steve Smith from Care for Calais. Thanks for your time this evening. No, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. 
Well, the Home Office has tonight said they are looking at a number of legal challenges but can't comment on individual cases. They added that accommodation is offered on a no-choice basis.